back to our final panel session for the 16th edition of ABLF Talks as we discuss how the crisis can be a catalyst for a tech-led future. I'd like to welcome to the stage Ala Adil, Vice President and Managing Director for the Middle East and Africa at Cerner Corporation. Ala joined Cerner in 2009 and previously as the Senior Director and General Manager of Saudi Arabia and Africa and that made an impact on clients and Cerna by leading his team to be trusted partners in helping partner organizations achieve their goals and objectives. And before joining Cerna, he held roles in healthcare sales at GE and Fuji Medical. Welcome, Ala. Welcome, Sally. Thank you for having me today. I look forward to a great session with you and my colleagues. We look forward to it. And uh, joining us as well, we have Derek Hookingham, he is chairman and co-founder at Palm Fusion Technologies and Yella Limited. His senior involvement has significantly transformed the outreach and the volume of sales of multiple major projects well above levels that might otherwise have been achieved. And over the decade of the 2000s, Derek worked on several multi-billion dollar mega resorts and was a key partner through the Plaza Naranja Group which leveraged strong crosslinks between several hotel chains and developers of major mixed-use projects internationally. Derek, welcome. You're joining us from Bangkok. Yeah, I'm here from Bangkok because I've just been in uh, quarantine and uh, I'm really happy to be here. And thank you, Sally, so much. And also thank uh, all the audience. And I'm really looking forward to this session. And I feel great yeah. after, after two weeks of lockdown. <laughs> We, we are so glad that uh, you are with us. You're over the worst of COVID, thankfully. Uh, and, you know, for this incredibly insightful discussion that we're about to have, um, let's let's talk about the uh, impact of COVID. Ala, if I can start with you, uh, give us an overview of the biggest challenges and opportunities that the pandemic has developed, has presented for tech developers like Sona. Absolutely. Thanks again, Sally, and, and uh, welcome to everybody joining us from anywhere. Um, so Sander is a healthcare IT company. We've been in the region for 30 years. We're actually based in Kansas City in the States, and, and we've been in, in healthcare IT for almost 42 years now. So obviously, just like everybody else, the last two years have been, um, have been an eye-opener for all of us. Uh, the past two years have been challenging. Everything has changed, and COVID actually affected everything and everyone. Um, however, let me start with the positive. On the positive side from, uh, from uh, the opportunities, the pandemic uh, literally fast forward and accelerated our vision. Uh, the 10 years become, became two years, the weeks, the years became month, and really involved very closely to the healthcare facilities and the hospitals we work with and our partners. Uh, we made thrives of, of innovation in artificial intelligence, in patient experience, uh, in telehealth and population health observation and tools to manage the pandemic and to fight the pandemic. So there has been no shortage of opportunities um, and work to be done over the last two years. We actually worked the last two years more than we've logged hours over the last five years combined. So it's been, it's been a very uh, busy couple of years, definitely. Uh, but working as one team with our clients, I think, I think the, the worst is behind us. Um, speaking of the worst and the challenging, I think one of the most challenging things we've, we've had to do, Sally and the team, is uh, change the mindset and adopt to the situation, adopt uh, the different approach, think differently, think faster. Um, speed and efficiency and optimization have been the name of the game. We need to go fast, we need to go rapid, and we need to do it in a very data-driven, artificial and, uh, intelligence driven way where every decision we make, every project we engage with actually makes an impact and makes an impact fast. Whether it's, um, if I wanna take you back to the, let's call it the dark ages of 2020, when uh, we're all fighting before even the vaccine, before even knowing what's true and what's not true, uh, information and knowledge and preventive health was the name of the game. How do you share those information? How do you share what's true and what's not true? Uh, that's something we used to work very closely with the ministries on. Then we move to how do we cope with the influx of critical care patients and so on and so forth. And now we're in the phase of the vaccination, who needs to take the extra shot of vaccination and going back to 
what I call past COVID normal, which which uh, we'll talk more about it. I think today is that this is purely driven by technology and purely driven by artificial intelligence in healthcare, if you ask me. Mm. Absolutely. Now, Derek, coming to you, when we're looking at the real estate sector, what has been the biggest impact there on real estate development in Asia due to the pandemic? And how are you assessing the situation over the last two years? Yeah, that's very interesting because you see that uh, people still hold to their old traditional styles of development. I believe there is a need of change. So I'm creating new USPs. So introducing the metaverse, the uh, twin metaverse and a triplet metaverse into real estate. So recreating new USPs, which never been done before, which I've done in the past too. And also other technologies which have never been used. For example, Palm Fusion Technologies, which is non-intrusive, which is uh, GDPR PSD2 compliant, which is, for example, I scan the veins inside your hand, the print of your hand and the 3D of your hand. And your hand is your access control, your electronic ID and your payment system. So these things are coming up and going completely crazy uh, because this is now the most important. I've always been a fan of, of nature, for example, when I was with Alberari or Jameer Luxury, but the nature stays even more important. That's why you see also the shift from the apartments to the villas. People want their own more privacy. So also privacy is key in technology, right? Because uh, people want decentralization, blockchain, security, privacy, uh, that all brought more efficiency in the whole uh, because of COVID. So I don't see COVID as a negative. But of course, when I walked around in, in the streets of uh, Samui or Pattaya or, or, or other Asian countries, it was uh, sad to see that when you depend on tourism, that uh, people are literally begging on the street in certain places, uh, which were uh, booming before. But uh, as you can see that they have a good spirit and people have good spirits and they are still happy. So I don't think that, uh, that it's a, a huge impact, but the impact is there and we just have to be there for each other. And I think the Middle East did a really good job, especially Dubai. And uh, that's why I will never leave Dubai. Every time I think of leaving Dubai, and something boom comes for Dubai and I will stay again. So in the end, I will stay the rest of my life. We have, of course, our leaders to thank for that. And um, I think it's a great place. And I think Dubai and Asia are my favorite. And uh, I believe that uh, the nature and, 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 and technology can, can be combined in a very good uh, way in a seamless way and in a really nice way and not destroying it. Thank you. It, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, this seems to be a recurring theme today uh, as, as we talk about the, the resilience of Dubai and the vision of Dubai and, and the, the ability to adapt to situations like COVID better really than, you know, most other cities and countries uh, as well, which is quite extraordinary. But you have mentioned a, a few different things there that I think we need to um, come back to a little bit more talking about the the metaverse which we're hearing a lot about now I'm not sure how many of us really understand the impact of that but also people coming back to nature people coming back to you know what is real what is grounding for them as as well and making that a priority so we're going to come back to a, a few of those uh, themes that you've just highlight highlighted but Anna if I can uh, come to you now and, and ask you about where healthcare is concerned, you know, how particularly artificial intelligence has uh, enabled home health experiences and enhanced care management, especially with regards to COVID-19. Thanks, Sally. And, and this is kind of related and not related. It's more metaverse, less, less uh, uh, nature and, and uh, green grass, but definitely something we need to consider and look at. Uh, let me let me take you through a journey. Imagine if the pandemic happened in, in the 70s or the 80s, right? It would have been a, a catastrophe from the way we do business, the way we interact with each other. Those This kind of hybrid events or, or tele-events might not even be possible or it would have been definitely not this much intimate. Um, the pandemic has made us realize the importance of artificial intelligence. And, and let me specifically focus in on healthcare in managing a healthcare or the community or even for individuals, uh, regardless of the location, regardless of their level of technology savviness. Now you can actually uh, prevent them from having bad healthcare experience. You can proactively manage their wellness and optimize their hospital visit. 
in, in, la in the late 2020, early 2021, going to the hospital, especially in, in countries where the pandemic was peaking, for non-COVID related was a big issue. If you're coming to the hospital to do a, a plastic surgery or, or to look at a rash, you're actually costing the opportunity for somebody who really needs healthcare due to the pandemic uh, and you're taking their spot. So how do you as a community, how do you as a country manage that population from coming in, uh, specifically if they don't need to come in? So we've seen that artificial intelligence be the tool they use, whether it's calling Allah or Derek or Sally and saying, hey, you have your, your, your wellness checkup is scheduled for this day. This is a busy day for us. We would like you to come in on this date. Or if you haven't had your third booster a shot, um, you need to come in. Or somebody who has high level of diabetes or, or, or a cr chronic disease, they need to be first in the group of priorities for vaccination. So we've seen countries use those technologies as we've all highlighted. I think the UE and the GCC in general have uh, succeeded unconditionally in finding the pandemic and making us all feel safe. Uh, me and Derek were talking before that. I haven't lived Dubai in, in the last three years because um, I feel the safest here for me and my family. And it's because of those preventive healthcare or taking healthcare in a very serious manner where we all felt safe to stay here, get vaccinated here, and we're lucky to be part of this environment and community. Absolutely. And uh, so Derek, um, coming back to you and the points that you were making about the technologies that are really transforming the way that the real estate sector operates. One of the most talked about and indeed debated technologies in recent years has to be blockchain and crypto. So talk to us about how blockchain and cryptocurrencies are bringing innovation and change uh, for real estate solutions. Yeah, I mean, uh, until now, uh, people were looking at real estate, blockchain and crypto to an SPV, to a special purpose vehicle to put a company on top and then you fractionalize the company. It was also with uh, Global REIT or with other REITs and fractionalizing those. But what is the reality which we have to go, which I'm going now, we're going to make an exact copy of the real world in the metaverse or so in the virtual world, an exact copy, and they're always in parallel. So if you change something in a, in a virtual world, then it will be changed in the real world. If you change it in the real world, it will be changed in a parallel. Then, of course, there is also the triplet, which is the triplet, which means the third uh, uh, world, which is uh, gamified. So that can be variable and that can be all the crazy stuff, which you see, right? Of all like, oh, we're going to change this and we're going to sell this, which is all crazy. But we have to see that all this brings seamless experience to the people. For example, if you have a problem in your home, you click on the on the virtual world and it's immediately solved in the background, in the blockchain and in the smart contract. There's automatically sent uh, uh, all the providers, automatically sent where is the tile, which color it is, if it's broken, and you get the best price immediately and the next day it's fixed and you don't even have to be at home because your camera is also connected to the metaverse. So it's all much more seamless and it's much more effective and people waste less time on these kind of things. Because then you have also more time to, for example, enjoy nature and, for example, to meditate or, for example, to do other things, right? For example, I'm advisor also, yes, we trust. Yes, we trust is, in a, is something from uh, Switzerland. And they just look at meditation and our experience and the breathing and all these things. And you can access that through your metaverse and through the triplet and a, and a, and a virtual twin. You can access that at any time and anywhere, anywhere in your house. And you can put it on all your walls in your, in your house and you can really interact with everyone. And what is also super interesting is you have, uh, for example, Blockchain Valley Virtual, right? Which is a company which is from uh, Nico. It's an amazing company. Then you build your own avatar. So I have my own avatar. I walk in the virtual world, like literally, and I greet people and I talk to them. So if you could make it even more creepier, then imagine if you have children and even if something happens to you your children can still talk to you after you you're gone from this earth and they can still talk to you with the same voice and there's ai learning so they can still speak to you after you die so this goes so far and it is so exciting that i'm like so involved into this and i'm so happy to 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 have covid because otherwise i've never had the opportunity to learn about this and to to really i'm super passionate about it. 
and I, and I love this uh, this space. And what you said about crypto, yeah, crypto I think is really good because um, now uh, it can crypto is not only about decentralization because yeah there is decentralization but there still needs to be some uh, regulation and control. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is that it's much more efficient, much more seamless, and also you will see soon very regulated uh, exchanges and custodians coming up uh, in the world, which are fully regulated by US, by uh, by Middle East, by Singapore, by Europe, and they will be perfect, and they will be also insured, right? Now you see, of course, in the beginning, a lot of cowboys, a lot of crazy stuff, right? For example, I remember I, I had my restaurants in Bangkok and I was the first one to accept Dashcoin in my restaurant, which is the crypto payment it was many years ago. And Dashcoin was a coin from the dark web, which is of course a really bad name, right? And, uh, but that brought me a lot of clients. And then I started to see, wow, this crypto really works, right? And now you see, you can pay, I can pay now anywhere with, uh, with Bitcoin, with USDT, with everything, right? and it's getting more and more. And what I believe also, it will impact. You don't have more paper, you don't have to print, it's all digital. For example, also with Palm Fusion, there's no more credit card because your hand yourself is your credit card. So no more plastic, no more losing your cards. That's, there's so much coming, which is good for you. Everybody wants to always talk about the negative stuff. Let's talk about the positive stuff, as long as you're not positive uh, on COVID, of course. But then, that's it, that's my opinion. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Derek, there is so much uh, to, to talk about there, but I, I will come back to you and, and ask you as well about some of the cutting edge technologies that are currently changing the face of healthcare management here in the Middle East. Well, we've seen, we've seen a lot of enhancement as we talked about. Uh, we've seen a portion of what Derek talked about being used in healthcare. Uh, in the matter of, of uh, analyzing a data of a country on supercomputers, uh, announcing where are we trending, when is the next wave going to hit us, and so on and so forth. But if we take COVID out of the equation, the old way of, of uh, doing healthcare, when you have to book an appointment, go to the doctor, have the face-to-face, -face, get um, extend your symptoms, get examined, and then at the end be discharged or treated, that's the old way of, of doing healthcare. Although uh, the touch of the doctor and the human touch and the human interaction is, is extremely important, we as a society didn't have that luxury over the last two years. So we have to improvise, right? Over, over day and night, over literally a week or a couple of months, we all moved into um, app communication or online tools, video conferencing, telemedicine. So we're seeing that become the new normal. We're seeing our kids, our young generation, um, prefer to be seen virtually than face to face if they have the choice. So, so we're definitely one thing for sure. It's not going to go to the way it was. Um, I don't know what the future holds for us, but I think you, we will be seeing more and more of those um, edge cutting edge development in technology being used in healthcare. Whether it's even having your your doctor visit on the metaverse, which is something we're actually actively talking about and seeing with some of our partners. The pandemic has literally leaped us into the future in, in a matter of months. And, and I don't think there's any going back in the advancement. I think we'll find a new normal whenever and if the pandemic is, is behind us. Uh, but that's uh, that cutting edge technology development that we're all talking about is here to stay. You know, you, you talk about, you mentioned having your doctor see you and examine you in the metaverse, which it's hard to imagine for some of us, you know, we're thinking this is a whole other separate, you know, kind of realm It's the digital realm, really, there's no physical contact there. And this kind of brings me to Seema's question. And she sent a question in from Turkey. Hi, Seema. And she says, when it comes to healthcare, the human touch is highly imperative. And how do you balance that out in the digitization process, Allah, if you can please elaborate on that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something all, all our clients, all our partners, all the hospitals have been also trying to find that, that balance. Mm -hmm. I think um, I want to I make sure we distinguish between the, the last two years where going to the hospital is, is more of a demand on the healthcare and you're adding to it as opposed to when you really need to. But in the future, 
I see the balance as in the first triage, the first call, the first interaction uh, will be digital, will be will be maybe virtual call, virtual visit. We all have our, our watches, our smart watches. Um, Derek is talking about our hand uh, uh, footprint or our hand print to digest some of the information. So I believe the future will hold a hybrid between the first visit will be will be virtual or at least the first checkup, and then as needed, uh, you will go and visit your doctor and have your face-to-face -face interaction. I truly don't believe the face-to-face -face is going away anytime soon. I think the face-to-face -face is going to transform into something new, and, and that's where the hybrid is gonna come into play. And I know it's, it's difficult to imagine, but we also never imagined, I, I don't think anybody predicted uh, other than Bill Gates in one of his speeches, we're gonna go to this extreme on digitalization so fast, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's what, what's looking ahead of us. Uh, a hybrid of face-to-face, -face, uh, specifically when needed, especially when needed, and then the first triage, which used to be done <laughs> at your general host, general doctor, will be online. That's my opinion, at least. Derek, coming back to you, because you've mentioned a lot of different uh, technologies that uh, will be coming up. And, and Missar from uh, London uh, has a similar uh, question to this about uh, the balance between uh, personal interactions and also digital interactions, saying uh, sales and real estate usually always require personal interaction, but the pandemic accelerated the adoption of digitization and changing sales strategies. So could you give us a brief on what these strategies look like and how have the results affected the real estate industry? Yeah, I mean, I think that people are still uh, don't understand what is going on. And uh, uh, I believe that I'm preparing the new USPs and the unique selling points. And a lot of people are not doing that. They're still talking the old world and uh, you have to adapt. And uh, it can be also beneficial because uh, for example, Let's take a, 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 a real estate visit or a DJ concert or whatever it is, right? I remember that uh, there was a DJ concert which would normally be attended by 200,000 people, right? And now there is only restrictions and now they were attending more than a few million people and paying much less, but you were attending with your, with your avatar, right? And you still had the interaction with the people. But what the good thing is also when you meet those people, you can really talk to them and you can really dance and you can enjoy the music and you can really get to know them before you're going to take the next step to, to, to make a, a physical contact and a social contact because everybody always sees the negative. That's the same with real estate. You have a much longer discovery phase and a much faster discovery phase. And if you discover your client, right, and you know what your client wants, you can act much better, much more op uh, optimal, much more efficient. So all these technologies can help you. You should not only think about the negative. Of course, it doesn't feel right because people want to touch, people want to feel, but you have to just get used to it because the things are changing. And mm. of course, the human interaction is still important, but it, become, it will become more and more private and more and more individual, and it will be more and more special. And, uh, and also, I believe even in the healthcare, it will take much longer uh, or much, or it goes much faster, but it will be much more efficient that you get the right treatment at the right moment, at the right time, and the right treatment, the right one. Because there are so many checks done virtually before you meet that person, right? Normally you meet that person and uh, doctors and uh, 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 psychologists, they can make mistakes too, everybody is human. So if you have the first the AI and the big data and everything there, yeah, I think it's a big advantage. And you have to think about the positive thing, right? And not only about the negative. You have much more analysis, you have much more things. Of course, there are people who want to use big data and AI for bad things, but that's with everything, right? So, yeah, I believe it's a hugely interesting thing. And for real estate especially, but you will see what will be coming up. It will be completely crazy. I mean, now you see that the triplet world is really, really famous and they're going crazy amounts. Oh, I buy that land, I buy a ship, I buy this. I buy this gear, but at a certain point, there will be the, 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 the exact twins, and then it's going to be really hitting the market. Then it's going to be important. Then it's going to be really seamless. Then it's going to be an added value. 
beyond so beyond we... the hype really it's kind of like you know how do we get beyond the hype and so a final question to the two of you as we wrap up um if i can start with you ala and i'll come to you as well derek uh, how can technology be used in business, whether it is in healthcare, real estate, in, entertainment, whatever sector, so that those industries are more resilient to future shocks, future pandemics, or or other uh, events that uh, you know really shake industries like this? I love. I think um, agility, agility, agility is something we all learn, and we need to adapt for the fu- in the future. Uh, the speed of adopting new technology need to go faster. I think that's what Derek and myself are, are talking about. <clears throat> I think that hype uh, that we talked about is going to be shortened much faster. I, I read a report yesterday that was mind-boggling to me. Um, 90% of the data that humanity have collected has only has only been collected in the last uh, seven years. So in the last seven years only, we've collected 90% of the digital data we have. So the data is there. How do we analyze it? What tools do we use to analyze it? Uh, what's the goal of analyzing it? Is going to be a humanity next adventure, in my opinion. And I think we as companies, one, need to be agile and move fast. Two, we need to work together more and more. Um, in healthcare specifically, we've seen everybody come together really as, as one team, one one community, whether it's the telco communication, whether it's the 5G, 4G technology companies, whether it's the hardware companies, whether it's the software companies, we've all just came together as, as people to fight the pandemic for our families. And I think that's what the future will expect from us. That's what we owe our children to continue this momentum of adapting the the good technologies. I think Derek hit on a good point there. It's not all um, good. I think some of it needs to be filtered. And that's where we as leaders need to come into play and filter what needs to be filtered and move into adoption much faster um, and get to the value part to the community much faster as well. Derek, very quickly. Yeah, I believe in, uh, everybody talks about decentralization, but I believe there should be a regulation in decentralization, which you could do with master nodes and super nodes, and then you can regulate it. I think that's why Dubai always recuperates so fast. I mean, you need leadership, you need to do this. And you see that now Europe is lagging behind. Same with Thailand. I will see that when, when it starts to get over here in Thailand, it's like in April, it will boom, because there's a strong leadership, even though it's military and and, and kingdom combined, but it will work. Like same as in Dubai, it works. You need to have a, a good leadership. You need to be strong. And exactly, you need to focus on the good things and leave the bad behind. Get over it, move on, don't cry, just go for it. And it will be all fine and do good stuff. There are so many good projects and so many good technologies out there and we can really use them. And don't complain, move on. So I think that is the most important and we, must have learned that in COVID. No, if you still haven't learned that, sorry, I'm stubborn myself, I'm Taurus, but I have learned that. And please just think positive, do your best and just be healthy and just use the technologies in a good way. And even quantum computing and big data, right? Because quantum computing is coming, don't forget. You know how crazy that is? That's the next topic in the coming years after metaverse. I think we're going to have to have, you know, much more of a discussion on this. This is definitely not the end of it, but unfortunately, this is the end of our session. I want to thank you both, Ala, Adil, and uh, as well, Derek Hugenkamp. Thank you both so much for an amazing discussion. And this is definitely not the end of it, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Kapuna Krab. Thank you. <laughs> We look forward to seeing you back in Dubai and a big thank you as well to all of our speakers today for joining us for another brilliant edition of the ABLF Talks with riveting discussions that I'm sure you'll agree can only propel forward a better world. These sessions will soon be available online on demand at the ABLF City in case you missed out or if you want to see them again as well as on our ABLF YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, make sure you do subscribe and you will be the first to know as soon as new sessions are added. We can't wait to see you here back again for the 17th edition of the ABLF Talk series. I'm Sally Musa. Thank you and see you then.